You've probably heard lots of YouTubers talk about the full frame shallow depth of field, but in reality, there is no such thing. Depth of field, focal length, aperture, those are all properties of the lens. And the lens doesn't change depending on the sensor that's behind it. But the term full frame shallow depth of field isn't just taken out of thin air, there is something to it, but not in the way that most people think. And to demonstrate this point, I set up two different tests. At the first test, I used a 24 to 70 mm at 2.8, and I left it at 24 mm. I put it on a GH5 without the speed booster, which gives a crop of 2x. I used it on an A7S II in super 35 mm crop mode, which gives us a crop of 1.5. And then lastly, I used it on an A7S II in full frame mode, which gives us a crop of 1. The tripod or the camera position did not move at all. So what changed? Well, as we can see in this test, the only real difference here is the amounts that are punched in. As you can see on the GH5, it's much more cropped in compared to the full frame. And then we have the super 35mm in the middle. The depth of field and the background blur hasn't changed at all. And if we crop all the pictures to match, it's very easy to see that they're basically all identical. Because the depth of field doesn't change because I changed the sensor that's behind the lens. Because the lens still projects the exact same image to all the sensors. It's just that the bigger the sensor, the more of it we can capture. But as we can see, the framing in these clips are completely different. So what happens if you want to match the framing? This is where full frame equivalencies comes in. And that's an entire topic on its own with a lot of misunderstandings, so I'll probably make a video on that as well. And I want to apologize for slightly tilting the camera down by accident, which gives us slightly different framing, but in my opinion it's still close enough to get the point across. If we start at the GH4 and leave it at 24mm, we have a crop factor of 2x, which gives us a full frame equivalent 48mm field of view. If we then move out to the super 35mm crop, to get the same framing we have to zoom in the lens to roughly 32mm. And if we then move on to the full frame sensor, we have to zoom in all the way to 48mm to get the same framing. And this is where the phrase full frame depth field comes from. Because when we use the same lens on all the different sensors, we didn't affect the depth field at all. But if we want to get the same framing, will use a longer focal length on the full frame sensor and that's what's affecting the depth of field. It's not the sensor, it's the lens. But the size of the sensor will affect what focal length we tend to use. So in that regard, it kind of does affect depth of field after all. But if we didn't have the option to zoom, the full frame camera would have to be much closer to the subject to get the same framing. This will, however, affect the perspective since the subject is now at a lesser distance, we have to focus the lens closer, which in return gives us a shallower depth of field. So what's really affecting the depth of field is the focal length, the distance to the subject, and the aperture. It's not the sensor, but if you're after that really shallow depth of field look, a full frame sensor will make it much easier, since you can now use longer lenses to achieve the same framing. If you are using a smaller sensor, you could use the aperture to compensate. But I'll try to cover all the equivalencies in a different video. So sensor size doesn't really affect the depth of field, but in the end, it kinda does. So why am I making this video? Well, there's a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings regarding depth of field, and a lot of people think you need a full frame sensor to achieve that look. So I just want to help clear up some of the misunderstandings to show what's really affecting the depth of field to help people achieve the look that they want. And I'll probably be making one regarding crop factors and full frame equivalencies as well. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more and I'll see you next time.